everybody. Welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs. And uh, I'm having a great time. Can't believe it's 2024, over 8,000 interviews, eight years. And uh, I still get excited and pumped when I meet entrepreneurs and people who are doing the creative craft of entrepreneurship. And I'm proud to introduce uh, our next guest, uh, Julian Fialco, co-founder and managing partner, 186 Ventures. Sorry for that little stumble up front, but welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Great. Why don't you tell us a little bit about 186 Ventures? Great. So first of all, thanks for having me. Uh, I guess 186 Ventures, uh, we are a early stage pre-seed and seed focus venture capital firm based between you know here, Boston and, and New York. And we like to back founders, you know, truly innovating at that zero to one phase. And so we bring an operational uh, know-how based off our backgrounds, but also you know, leverage certain uh, nodes in our networks to really help the companies in our portfolio grow and build and really get from that zero to one phase. Uh, we, we truly look at you know being a part of the ecosystem and feel lucky that we have the opportunity to back and work with some incredible operators and founders. Well, you know, you gave us a good headline. I know there's a lot more details to that because there's a lot of history behind what you've done. Uh, I don't know if you want to explain a little bit about why this is important to our ecosystem and, you know, what kind of companies uh, you uh, have been associated with in the past to give a sense to our listeners. I think that there's a need for for what we're doing. You know, there's definitely tons of other venture capital firms, much more storied and and, and successful in their own right. And you know, given we're still very early in the infancy uh, lifespan of of one eight six, you know, we just try to bring just a different type of product and solution to when it comes to being you know hands on partners uh, with the portfolio companies. We get the opportunity or the lucky opportunity to work with and support. And so, you know, based off of what has been in the market and where we saw a potential opportunity for us especially here in the Northeast to, to bring just, you know, founder friendly, you know, being uh, extremely diligent and working extremely hard for our companies. And it just allows us to one, add value outside the capital, but two, just be great partners to folks in the ecosystem as they're looking to, you know, make the jump to start a business or looking to start something for their second or third go at it. And we just feel that we're very lucky to be in this position. And we look forward to continuing to build up one, our portfolio of companies we work with, but two, just the overall brand of 186 as being friends and partners to early stage companies. Well, I'm a big fan of uh, people who come by entrepreneurship almost by generation to generation. It's almost like a family business, even though it's not. My family have been entrepreneurs for probably 500 years. It's kind of interesting, and it's just in my family DNA. Uh, it's also in your family DNA, isn't it? Yes, it is. Can you tell us a little more? Yeah, As I so said, I, I know. Uh, I, 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 I used to sh uh, sit right next door to your grandfather. Coincidentally, I told you that earlier. I don't, yeah. hope you don't be saying that. He was quite an no. interesting, interesting fellow and quite an entrepreneur in his own right for an attorney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so Jay Fialco, my grandfather, like you alluded to, you know, he uh, was entrepreneur's own right, like you said, uh, more on the attorney and legal side. And then my father was very entrepreneurial himself. You know, st started several businesses with his partner, uh, Joel Cutler. And then back in in late, you know, nineteen ninety nine, you know, he founded uh, with Joel General Catalyst, which has grown to be a you know a large multi stage venture capital firm um, with you know north of you know twenty five billion. Uh, under management and assets and it's been you know truly incredible one to witness that journey from an early age to what it's become today but also learn through osmosis uh, a lot of you know what to do with standing up a firm and how to act uh, as, a, as a partner and just be an overall contributor to the ecosystem and to the community um, not just on on the business side but also philanthropic side as well and feel very lucky that i had a first-hand look at that and you know my dad's an unbelievable mentor and friend and you know we you know we, we so you don't work together. However, we do work very closely in the same industry where, you know, him at a much different scale. Um, we look up to what General Cows has been able to build and hopefully, you know, you know, incorporate some of those lessons and learnings with what we're doing here at 186. Did you always want to be in this business? You know, I've, I, you know, I have an entrepreneur I work with who wrote a composition when they were seven years old for school that they knew they wanted to be in the similar business to their father. And that was mm -hmm. always their ambition. Uh, my brother picked his profession when he was seven years old after finding a movie. 
Did you always know, or was this something that came later on? You know, I, I'd always seen how uh, being a venture capitalist is an unbelievable job. You know, you're always, you know, you're working with the next generation of innovators and disruptors and truly, you know, hoping you can add value, obviously, on the capital side, but supporting them with everything else that needs to happen um, on the operational side and just truly being a partner and a champion for them. For me, I, I definitely kind of like luckily fell backwards into this. You know, I met my now partner, Giuseppe, back in 2018. I was working at a company called DraftKings. Uh, Giuseppe started a company called FAM. DraftKings acquired his business. We met throughout that acquisition process and then post-acquisition worked very, very closely together internally at DraftKings. And through that uh, job of working together, underwriting a lot of businesses, we realized that one, we just had an affinity for you know underwriting and you know really truly dissecting different types of opportunities. But two, we just really loved the early stage nature of getting involved with businesses. And the last part is we just also found that we just had a very good relationship as friends, but also different skill sets and different types of perspectives that matched together kind of gave us that unique um, ability to, you know, add value and, and also underwrite opportunities in, in a pretty efficient way. So we decided to pretty quickly after becoming friends, we pooled our capital into a vehicle called the 186 Ventures. It was just our own money. So it was an angel fund. And over, you know, two and a half year span, we made uh, over 30 one angel investments together, built up a track record, worked all the kinks of, you know, working with each other and, you know, how we're going to bring a uh, unique, our unique backgrounds and unique skills to, to collaborate in that one plus one equals three type um, uh, opportunity. And, in 2021 decided to institutionalize that fund. So we, we decided to raise our first fund. We went out to market and we raised it and closed it back in, in 2021. And, and since then have been investing out of that vehicle to date. Interesting. Uh, now, Boston is a funding mecca. It's one of our uh, the driving forces of the Massachusetts economy. Do you see the industry changing a lot in the next three years, five years with AI, with technology, just with financing? Yeah, I think it's, you know, I would say there's the caveat of, you know, it's an incredibly hard time to start a business right now. Um, I think the capital markets are, you know, there's the micro and macro, some things you can control, some things you can't. Um, but I think that there's also the vein of there's no better time to build a business than today. I think with, to your point with AI, you know, business can be run just that much more efficient and, you know, teams that might've needed, you know, four to six engineers now might only need one to two. And, you know, there's just other opportunities based off certain advancements in technologies to just build businesses quicker than ever before from computing power to just the overall speed for um, a lot of these large language models and things that, you know, can integrate into platforms to make them just run that much more efficiently. It's just exciting to see. And I just think that overall, you know, businesses now are going to be, or at least founders are going to think about things in a lot more of a capital efficient way you know, truly optimizing, you know, the amount of money that they need to start a business going out to raise when they actually need the capital, not going to raise because, you know, money's being thrown at them. I think in the ZERP era, you know, there's a lot of companies that got, um, you know, bloated with you know very very high valuations that maybe not saying in a bad way but you know if they're doing a low amount of revenue there's no reason for someone to come in and you know mark their business at you know a few hundred million if not a billion dollars when they really haven't proven anything yet even if it might have been a really smart team coming out of an incumbent or a really strong organization you know i still think people want to see the true fundamentals and the core you know strong unit economics and businesses that way that you know founders and executives don't spend at all cost and try to grow at all costs that they spend their dollars wisely and are very efficient with the runway. So I think you're going to get a new generation of very efficient founders who, who run businesses in a, in a different type of way than they have in the past few years. I'm a, a big fan for more efficient founders. That's usually where they were historically not efficient. Uh, yes. Time is always short on this show. Uh, and I hope you come back again, maybe talk about some cases, the types of companies you're looking for. It really fits our portfolio for radio entrepreneurs. If someone's looking for you and 186 Ventures, how would they find you? Uh, pretty easy. Uh, my email is you know julian at 186ventures.com. Feel free to shoot me a note. You can also find me on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm pretty active there. Uh, and then I guess to, to answer your question, which I didn't answer before around 186 Ventures, we're you know, investing across software and infrastructure. So we take more of an agnostic approach when it comes to types of businesses. So we're really kind of open to meeting just the next generation of great founders and operators. So if you're building something and looking to make the jump, feel free to reach out. That's great.
Uh, I want to thank you for being on the show today and remind everybody uh, that we will continue to have stories of entrepreneurship on Radio Entrepreneurs. <laughs>